Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews. And me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Hi everyone, how are you today? Welcome to another episode of Sacred Sessions. I am Alison and I'm here with my beautiful co-host, Melissa Matthews. Hey Mel, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Good, and I'm glad that you did the intro because you say that I'm so beautiful. (laughs) Oh, yes you are. Yes you are. You are too. (laughs) So so what are we talking about today, Alison? Well, this week after... A few um, deliberations, we decided that it would be a really great topic to talk about confidence, clarity, courage, and comfort zones. So how does that sound for you? They are four C words and all have such great meanings behind them. So What's the first thing that comes to mind for you, Melissa, when you hear those words, confidence, clarity, courage, and comfort zones? Me. (laughs) (laughs) And here's another C word, challenges and consistency and courage. (laughs) Look, you know, this is something that everybody could understand and resonate with. You know, we, we go through our lives, you know, like, and there are times when, when we are challenged and we're Absolutely. looking at how we can move forward. We're looking at, you know, things that just don't feel right, you know, and, and so how do we, you know, what do we do? How do we look at that? How can we move forward, like, with courage? You know, how can we bring that into our lives? And, you know, for me, the easiest, the easiest thing that I've learnt to do is um, obviously self-realisation, and to me that's just the easiest thing. So I... I do meditate a lot, as you know. I don't sit around thinking about myself all the time. Well, mostly, but like, let's be honest, I'm fabulous anyway. But, but, but I do, I do look at what I'm uncomfortable with, you know. Mm. And that um, I've said to you before, you know, that shows up in my body. You know, it, it feels does it feel uncomfortable, maybe around the solar plexus area, or you know, I get um, yeah, something sort of niggling at me. Something is mm. maybe waking me up in the night, and I'm thinking about it, or yeah, it just it's just there. So yeah. I will look at that, and I think, you know what? Okay, that's showing up, or well, that's not showing up, <laughs> and I want that. How can I make that happen? What am I doing that might be impeding that? You know, because I've asked my guides for courage. You know, I said, show me courage. Show me how it shows up in the world. Show me what I need to be courageous. Help me Mm. to understand what that means, you know, to give me the confidence to go and do what I need to do in in all of my life, my personal life and my professional life, my social, my family life. But, you know, I really want to, you know, start showing up and I want to have more confidence about that. So, yeah, so for me, you know, you know, courage, confidence, clarity, it does actually help me with the meditation and being still and um and being really aware of who I'm mixing with who I'm listening to or even you know some some things that I believe myself I challenge myself another c word or if we already covered challenge <laughs> oh so many c words we're going to have we're going to talk about today so many c words um so having confidence i know is is something that a lot of my clients we do sessions on all the time in in my in kinesiology sessions people you know come to me and when I ask them you know what one thing would you like to work on or if I could wave my magic wand over you how would you like to be feeling and confidence is is such an important thing and I think why is that why do we often really struggle in our lives to have confidence and courage and many things can come up when I'm doing balances with my clients and you know many things that I've had to work through myself when it comes to these things having confidence means that stepping out of my comfort zone stepping out of my box standing up for myself speaking my truth living you know an authentic life 
can sometimes irritate people or, you know, it can bring up some conflict within our family and friends and it can even bring up criticism, you know, and I know that, you know, myself included and so many people I've talked to, we just are so sensitive to conflict and criticism and constantly being compared to um, other people. They all really affect our um, confidence and our self-worth and self-esteem. So um, those are really big issues that, you know, I've had to work through. And I know that you have too to be the fabulous person that you (laughs) are today. You've had to really address these things. And, you know, for many of us, we can just want to push the snooze button on it. Like I know we have these, you know, things show up in our life all the time to, you know, uh, making us want to step out of our comfort zone or speak up or have courage. But then we get fearful and anxious and we just try and like, you know, hide it all or go back in our box or push the snooze button on things and pretend it's not happening. You know, maybe just recluse into the world or so... (laughs) I'll There's come so back to that next ways. week. <laughs> oh, no, I meant the week after. I meant the week after. It's just a... like, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I, when you're talking about comparing, mm-hmm. you know I'm competitive. Like, like I'm super duper <laughs> competitive. <laughs> and <laughs> so one of the things that I learned was this. So after I, I'd... Um, I'm competitive in 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 an unusual way now, um, but I used to compare myself and used to think, okay, I'm going to reach those lofty heights and things like that. And now I know I can do it. But but a great way that I found to help me with my own self worth was um, uh, after um, uh, when I was getting over the effects of uh, my cancer treatment, and we had what they call um, cognitive deficits. Uh, or chemo brain and that's now we see that um, it's quite recognized now I understand and so your memory and your thinking can be a bit challenged right so what I did was um, my mother started playing Scrabble now mum I mean she's just amazing mum is just amazing at anything she does right (laughs) and I was like I've got to beat mum got to beat mum got to beat mum and then I had this realization it was actually if I was my own competition and I looked at my own score each time Mm-hmm. And I use that as a way to improve myself. So I'm looking at myself, not not at I've got to beat mum, I've got to win and beat mum because, quite frankly, she can still run faster at the age of 72 than we ever can. But <laughs> it's like <laughs> she's, a, she's a dynamo. But if I use that experience and I became my own competition and I decided when the race would be or I decided what it was and I would use that as a, as a way to grow, um, and to improve myself, because I do love Scrabble and I love words. I've always been a big reader, um, but, you know, I needed to, um, to, you know, to help myself. So i tell you what, like, it's pretty neck and neck now with the Scrabble, but that was the thing that I did and I still do to this day with a lot of the things that I do is that I work out what is my, like, I am my own competition, nobody else is, and it makes it a lot easier for me to actually move forward with a lot of things. Sometimes I need to remind myself about it, but essentially, I am my own competition, and I, and that's where the line is for me. <laughs> and most so of I remember. I I'd love to ask you then when you, how how do you cope then at times when you haven't lived up to your expectation or the standards that you set for yourself then? Because I know that for me, um, that's that self-criticism or like if we haven't achieved the, the goals that we've set for ourselves, time that can really affect our, our confidence and our self-worth sometimes so um is that something that you've experienced as well like how do you cope if you haven't or have you always met all your challenges that you've set for <laughs> oh, yourself yeah, melissa yeah. okay <laughs> no i may look perfect <laughs> I have challenges. <laughs> Look, I I have to be really factual. I'm a really factual person. Because, Look, with with the with the spiritual connection that I have, I have to be really earthed. I have to be really of earth. I have to be really human, and so that's why I like lists and things like that as well. So it makes a big difference for me. So I will I will challenge myself because. I am very hard on myself. I don't need anybody else. I don't need 
to listen to anybody else. I am my own worst critic, if you like. I'm aware and I'm always striving to achieve and to push myself. But I've really come back to now, okay, is this enough? Is this enough? When I And when I think about uh, my failings or something that I've looked at, am I, am I achieving it? Have I achieved it? I do go down the path of, look, you know what, is this still relevant? I do look at it. Is this still relevant? Does this really matter? Am I being too hard on myself? These, they are definitely questions that I ask myself because I am very, very, um, uh, you, you could call it pedantic. All right, you will, Alison. You know it. You've experienced it. <laughs> you can call it hyper-focused or whatever, but I'm really clear. Like I, There are things that I want to do and there are things, places that I need to get to. But I've also learned when I do ask myself those questions, you know what, was there a timeline for this? Was I supposed to be here yet? Because, you know, I there are things that I see for myself in the future. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm really clear about it and I've learned to ask these questions rather than, um, uh, rather than beat myself up. Because, you know what, I... I just don't need it. I haven't got time to beat myself up anymore. But yeah, I've I've learned the right questions to ask myself. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I I love this the the quote. I'm all about quotes. I've got a few coming. Do not say. I me. love the quote. Lower your expectation and raise your appreciation. Mm. You know, I truly believe like self worth and self esteem is the most important thing. And you know, there's, you know, you, like people say, you know, when a, when you're learning to walk as a baby and you stumble and fall, do you say, get up, you stupid little dummy? That's a beautiful quote from Esther Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> Abraham and Esther Hicks. Or do you just say, oh, ups to daisy, uh, up and keep, keep going. So, you know, I'm way more gentle with myself these days. I'm, yeah. you know, I practice compassion. I practice gentleness. Because again, you know, I used to be so easygoing with everyone else. I used to like forgive or understanding everyone else, but held myself to such high, high standards. And I realized how much that was crippling me. It was crippling me from taking action, um, courage to change, stepping out of my comfort zone. So I am very, you know, I've had to learn the hard way many, many times that um, how to have balance with that. Um, yeah. And I tell my clients all the time, and it comes up in balances all the time, that the blocks, the underlying issues that are blocking someone's confidence is a lot of self-criticism or sensitivity to criticism. So just cutting out all self-criticism is just a great place to start. Well, that's right. And it makes it a lot easier when you're quite clear about it and you go into situations or perhaps you seek advice and you realize, because I've learned this, like this was a, a huge thing, for me, a huge realization for me, was that sometimes when we ask advice of other people and what, the, what we get in, re, in return is not actually the answer to the question they're actually telling us what we're not doing mm. how we can improve it rather than actually this was my question here i only needed this little bit of you know just wanted your feedback on this little bit over here and suddenly they're giving you a whole critique on the whole thing mm. but essentially it comes through with what you're not doing now that can shatter your confidence yeah it definitely. can and so this is like this self-awareness we must have a self-awareness of that because they're only just they're just doing what comes naturally we always do what comes naturally to ourselves so you know that's another thing with confidence is understand um you know like how how you're showing up in the world and have that self-awareness to see you know what these are the things which are not helping my confidence maybe i yeah. need to seek advice somewhere else yeah yeah definitely yeah because, you know, when we're trying to grow and move forward, you know, we, we really do need to be mindful of our conversations and, and of, of, you know, of that too. Like, yeah, so that for me was a huge thing to understand that because, you know, I can, like I said before, you know, I can tell myself what's not right. I don't need anyone else to do that and I just want them to answer that one question. Can you just answer that question? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so, but, 
Yeah. Do you like? Do you do you find that as well? Like, even if you're going along fine and swimmingly, and then you know, and suddenly that sort of thing, like a, you know, something external like that can happen. So you're going along quite well. You're feeling quite happy. And you're working on something and then suddenly that type of thing can actually shatter your confidence or make you question it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and what, I, what I've had to really learn on a, on a soul level so much is that, you know, when things break down, it's often the prelude to a breakthrough. Mm. And when things that we have thought you know we've decided oh i'm going to do this i'm going to do it and it doesn't work out you know i've had to surrender that over to the universe or over to my higher power and because i love that saying as well you know whenever you make a plan god laughs you know (laughs) and that's just so so true for me and i know it might not be for you or for other people but literally we can be so limited in our mindset limited thinking in Mm. what we think our life should look like or our what we can expect and things like that to show up but our soul is unlimited and i tell you what developing my faith in a higher power has really transformed my confidence and courage to change because before before I had real confidence in a higher power I had very little confidence in the support beneath my feet like Mm. I had very little confidence that there was anyone or anything out there that could really support me um through changes that I needed to make in my life and that's why I believe that everything happens for a reason and I had to have lack of support in my life from physical humans sometimes to be able to then reach for or have the awakening that there is a power greater than me that has literally given me the confidence to step out of my comfort zone now in so many different ways, you know, even to... Um, study a diploma in kinesiology 10 years ago when no one had even heard of kinesiology um, and just to, just to tell people that I'm doing this opening my own practice when so many people doubted me or thought how are you going to make money you out of have that, that business or... experience Alice and you don't have this or you don't have <laughs> exactly this. exactly and who's going to come to you people aren't really interested in that kind of stuff you know I had so Turns much criticism <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing like where did I get that courage from where did I ha- get that inner confidence from you know to work in places where you know I felt people didn't really value me mm. I had to dig deep and really learn my own resilience my own self-worth my self-confidence it wasn't going to be spoon-fed to me It was not going to be spoon fed to me by other people and things like that. It was about building my own inner resilience. And that's what gives me the confidence to step out of my comfort zone every day, to even do these podcasts, to step out of the spiritual closet, to talk about things that, you know, other people might have still been afraid to talk about because they'd be judged or criticized. You know, that inner confidence just has got stronger and stronger and stronger. And it takes practice, doesn't it? Yeah, doesn't it? It does. And see, that's why I love my meditations and I love, you know, that perspective from the guides and, you know, being like quite clear. I I value because that meditation gives me exactly what you've just described, that quiet time, that um, that time to reflect. It gives me time to see what is important. And Absolutely. yeah, and it it makes such a huge difference, you know. So, so there. meditation gets you like for me as well. Oh, I think it's like yeah. it it give it gives you that it gives you perspective. It's like I like to like kind of rise above my life and look down at it and look yeah. at it things from that perspective. Yeah, it does. It shows me uh amazingly so it shows me things that i've missed like if i'm in a conversation or i'm having a conversation or even making a decision you know i still go away to make decisions and look and 
do it, do, you know, and I meditate on it or I think about it or reflect on it, however you want to put it, I still make those decisions wisely simply because that is how I do it and that's how I do it best and I make good decisions when I do that, not only for myself but for others, but I make good decisions and I have learnt, um, I've been challenged um, at times about my process on doing that but I that's how I feel comfortable with doing it. Some people, you know, they'll go with their intuition and, and it'll be fine but for me, I really want to consider like how that is you know I've got a family and so I've got there are things that I'm committed to willingly you know and I have choice in that so I just don't you know I want to be really mindful about what I commit to I want to be really mindful about how I show up and about the process for that for me is not making instant intuitive decisions Um, I like to go through and reflect on how my decisions will be because (laughs) it didn't work out for me before so (laughs) Let's be honest. So, yeah, but it helps me with my self-worth and my self-confidence. That's what really meditation does. It, it gives me that time to centre and to stop and that's it. And it's um, it's at Rebecca Campbell, you know, I remember her when I first heard her speak and she, and she, she used the term non-negotiable, mm-hmm. non-negotiable and spiritual practice and I thought, yes, that's, that's a, a great word or like a wise word, you know. So, yeah, wise words. <laughs> wise, wise words. <laughs> wise words. Wise, wise words. words. And my, I love, I love the phrase, what would courage have you do today? It kind of just cuts through everything for me. And what would courage have you do today? And it instantly brings forth that <laughs> inner niggle that you might have been like trying to skate around the outsides with. And, you know, your comfort zones. We can outgrow things very quickly sometimes. Sometimes things are slow, but sometimes we out, we are our comfort zones. We're outgrowing things. And I know when my comfort zones are being challenged. That's Alison's I, dog, not mine. Mine's a good dog. <laughs> She's beautiful. <laughs> See, you can't control things like that as well. But... When I when I know that my comfort zones are being like I'm being pushed out of my comfort zone, things can break down, things that you know can fall apart. And I think about where have I been limiting myself in my life, or what have I outgrown? What needs? What what do I need to upgrade? What am I? You know, because we've got that niggle often going on all the time. And I know Rebecca Campbell talks about that inner niggle. You mm. know that inner itch that is like, you know, niggling away inside you and um, just having the courage to embrace whatever is niggling inside you. Yeah, exactly. It can feel wonderful. It makes a big difference, very big difference. So what was – I thought there was another C word you were going to talk about. <laughs> um, so conflict. Yeah. I wanted to talk about conflict as well because I know conflict can be very challenging for some people, especially within their family dynamics, if they're wanting to take have courage to change or to step out of their comfort zone or to do things. Mm. And it can bring about conflict within the family and people not might aren't always may be happy for you to change or for you to grow, for you to even get more confident. You know, sometimes people in our lives like us to be, you know, disempowered or to not have much confidence. So they're really, really important things to look at and to get stronger and stronger in dealing with conflict and to get over challenges with conflict. Um, So, well, you know, um, sometimes we... (laughs) You know, so sometimes we're never going to sort that out, you know, and well, that, that's well, what that's I've learned. It. Yeah, sometimes it's just going to be, that's just going to be what it's going to be, um, you know. But yeah. emotional blackmail, so, sorry to interrupt you there. but No, but that's true. Emotional yeah. blackmail is something that I've really had to become aware of and I talk to my clients because it's amazing how much even loved ones can emotionally manipulate us and emotionally blackmail us 
without us realizing how much they're trying to control us and um yeah, they, and they don't want to be pushed out of their comfort zones by no, that's you know, right. what we're that's doing. Right. And that's the thing. Like with my um, – I've always been like really um, uh, open like with my family, but, you know, sometimes some of the things that I experience, you know, they just don't really want to hear about it and they become concerned. Another C word, concerned. And I'm just like, you know what, you do not need to be concerned about me. I will just not speak about this with you and that's okay. But do not, do not ever, ever challenge me like that. Be- and that's just all there is to it, you know, because there are some things that, that I can talk about with different people, but, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy in realising that because, you know, that's my, um, you know, that's my husband's boundaries. Like <laughs> Some of the things that I, you know, I just kind of come out with it and he's just like, what? <laughs> And that's just his boundaries. He just doesn't want to hear. But, you know, but I have been in situations before, you know, like where, no, they, they don't want me to change. They want me to stay exactly where I am. They want me to stay in that job that I'm not happy in. Because that's their comfort zone. It's their comfort zone. They don't want their life to change. They're unhappy too, but they yep. don't want their life to change. They don't want anything to disrupt it because, you know what, that's what they can cope with and that's okay, but that's not sitting right with me. And so, I, like, I do challenge you know, I challenge myself and and I, I do think about things in a way that um, that are going to benefit me and, and others, but but I don't back down. Like I, I keep moving forward and I but I just maybe, you know, change the dialogue or just know not to include certain things in conversations because some of the things that I do are a little more advanced and and um, you know, sometimes people just do want to stay the same. They do want to well, stay the same. Well sometimes sometimes it's better the devil you know. You know, how many how many of you out there know that they're not in a good place, that they're, they're not happy with things in their life, but it's, you know, they know this devil, you know, they know or they know yeah. this situation and they know how to navigate the uncomfortableness of it. It's the, the fear of the unknown is way yeah. more scary, you know, so that's the better the devil you know. But the fear of the unknown keeps us paralysed sometimes. You know, like we talk about the fight or the fl- the flight mode, but there's that freeze mode. And yeah. so many times when I'm time tracking with my kinesiology clients, you know, they're stuck in freeze mode because they haven't been able to fight back or they haven't been able to run away from a situation. And this could be even as far back as it, you know, childhood. So they've got this freeze mode energy still radiating throughout them, which is keeping them stuck in this comfort zone. Mm. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a good point because it's not only in our families but also in our workplaces, you know. I talked to a few people and it's really surprising, really, truly surprising. You know, often often we're said, oh, you know, like women with the glass ceiling and, and it's about, I'm going to be honest here, and it's about men. And I work in an industry like um, in, I, I haven't found that. I have not found that. Um, I found one or two, you know, but it was a bit, that was just a little bit different and I just, you know, dealt with that quickly. But on the whole, there are women who are saying, you know, like I'm actually being kept back because this is what's happening in the workplace And it's a woman. And it's, you know, that's okay. It doesn't matter whether it's male or female, but they are saying that they're feeling challenged because it's actually a woman doing this and they're going out of their way to make it so that they're uncomfortable in their workplace and so that they can't shine and so that they're not comfortable. Why aren't you here? What are you doing? What have you done? And so it's it's not a comfortable workplace to be in and they feel drained, they feel exhausted. You know, and so they want, you know, this one woman came and she really wanted the courage to understand the situation better. And so we worked not her, you know, within uh, my session, we worked not about other people within the workplace, but actually with her and how, you know, and and what she was doing um, and how um, so she could understand also more about her own personality and how that might have come through in other areas of her life because that's also important. And that helped her to understand herself and that also helped her to have the courage to 
work out how she could deal with this particular um, supervisor who was actually keeping her small. And she knew that, but she had the she had the expertise, she had the experience, you know. And this is like middle and upper management, you know. This is in the corporate arena, um, but you know, she she just said, "I just feel like I'm not going to be able to go anywhere," and I also feel like this woman's not going to give me a good reference. And so, you know, we we had to work with that, and it did work out quite well in the end. But you know, it was really surprising. Like, so that manipulation and that um, behavior can go on in so many areas of our life and sometimes we don't realize it that it's actually occurring in in different quantities or in in a different way in in you know maybe our personal life or our relationships and things like that so it's very um you know it's it's a it's a provocative thing and i'm I'm really mindful not to bring up certain things because you know it can be seen as a bit provocative but you know i i do have I do have people that are coming to me and they're, they're, it's this glass ceiling thing, but it's not what we would traditionally expect it to be. And so, Well, it's all about insecurities, really. You know, yeah. like people's insecurities can be playing out in so many different yeah. ways. And I always like to look at energetically, like, for example, with jobs, you know, you might have got this job like a few years ago because that's where your insecurity, self-worth, self-esteem was at. Now maybe, you know, as time's gone by, you're coming up against, you you know, you're outgrowing or these, these issues are coming up for you. And, you know, that's the thing. It's, it's because your self-worth or self-esteem is growing and you might have outgrown that job, outgrown that position. And in accepting the things that you cannot change and courage to change the things you can, sometimes, you know, you can't change that other person. You could change the energy within yourself, which can cut, cords and ties but having the courage to change go out and get a new job go and apply other places like that's the thing it's like you have more um control and freedom and opportunities and possibilities that you might have not you know that you've been missing yourself from yeah yeah and sometimes it's a here's another c word catalyst for change catalyst for change And that's, you know, and that's what I've also realised recently, you know, it's just sometimes, okay, I've outgrown that, it's time to go. That's your dog again, Alison. Stelzy's beautiful. She's lovely. She's a cocker spaniel. Um, she is beautiful. Um, so, so there you go. It can be showing up in so many different areas of your life. It truly has for me. And I know... When we're talking about courage courage and um, clarity and comfort zones and confidence, you know, many times we want other people to change, but it's really up to us to change and grow. And that's why I just love that prayer um, that I learned all those years ago in Al-Anon. You know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And it really helped me get crystal clear clarity on the things I can change and I can't change. And I can't change another human being, but I am to learn what I do have power over and we all have control over and we all have control over the things that we think about how we choose to think, choose to believe, choose to react, choose to act and choose to put our time, energy and focus on. And again, you know, where thoughts go, energy flows. So if you're constantly thinking about how to fix this, how to fix that, how to change this person, thinking about all the things that are going wrong in your life, it might be that catalyst to start to awaken and think about, the positive things let's like turn what what do I do want to be focusing on and having confidence to change and start to energize those kind of shift the energy and energize those things instead yeah use that energy in a positive way to benefit you because you know what if we're so focused on this thing here and and it's, oh, and the world is going wrong. And, you know, and sometimes it is, like, let's be honest. But you know what? Okay, this energy, you know, like I could get really angry about this and this could really consume my life. Um, or actually, I can actually move it over here 
let's turn away from that okay and this is what I can do about it and use that energy and put it into that and work out how you can best show up in the world with confidence with grace with ease and compassion for yourself which also is for others as well so so that was another sounds, good one sounds good sounds yep. very yep. very good so yep and what does Brene Brown say um she talks about courage courage uh, remember with vulnerability yeah but also she um she says um something about being in the arena if you're not in the arena you can't comment <laughs> And we love that. That's right. That's right. You know, yeah. So if you're not if you're not doing something, then really you can't. You know, there's no point in asking someone who's not in the arena doing it. You know, like exactly who's having (laughs) sitting on the sidelines, sitting on the sidelines, and they've got cheap shots. They've got no experience in something, or they're just you know they're just saying like what they feel. And you've got to understand that that people will say what they feel. But you know what? Have the grace to understand that that's whether that's suitable for you or not, not whether they're at your vibration or anything like that. But you know what, is that something that I need to hear? And sometimes it is. Or take to heart. Yeah, and and yeah, yeah, you take it to heart and suddenly, you know, that you, you, you're you giving up a whole thing that you've been working on or, you, you know, whatever. And, you, you know, you just got to understand, like, sometimes we just need to let things go and that's just what it is. That's all it is. So watch it. Your- yeah, and... Brene talks about that you cannot have courage without vulnerability. So yes. the sooner we get over our vulnerability, mm. the more we can step into our courage. Yes. And and that is just, you know, I know I've had to live through it. And, you know, for me it's like it's harder to stay stuck where you are than take that leap, leap of faith. You know, mm. we don't like to change if we don't have to, but holy moly, like how uncomfortable do things have to get before we finally take that leap of action to yeah. just do that one thing, have courage to do that one thing, say that one thing. Um, yeah, and I know we wouldn't be where we are today. I know I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't have just had the courage to change, to courage, to go to an Al-Anon meeting, you know, go to um, an open day, go to a meditation group, go and, you know, meet up with someone new that I've connected to, try a new this, try a new that, you know, like it's just this is our precious, precious life yeah. and um, it's really up to us to value it, love it, and to just really adore our precious life this lifetime. And to, you know, because we don't want to pass over again and look back and, and have regrets and go, oh, why did I just, you know, worry so much about what people are going to think or those kind of things, you know, just um, and surround yourself with, you know, some good friends that are just going to yeah. like lift you up um you know that's all the better that's why we love you know hanging out together because we like to surround ourselves with people who are just going to go you know what just do it even if you fall flat on your ass flat on your bum (laughs) you know you look you know you stuff up that's okay we're going to celebrate you anyway yeah that's it and sometimes we need that you know that's the thing sometimes we need that we need to hear that so Go forth, be courageous. Yep. Be confident. Be sure and know your worth and understand who you are because you know what? It's a pretty good thing. And life is just so much easier when you can choose, when you can have choice, and when you realize these things. They're not for everybody, but you know what? They were for me, and obviously they're for Alison as well. And it did make a huge difference to my to myself. Absolutely. And I'm just going to chuck in it. Like, even if you're not ready to take that action, just by changing your energy, raising your energy and self-worth and vibration can make things just happen naturally. It's just amazing that we don't always have to take that leap. No. It's getting your energy shored up first. It's getting yourself from the inside out in a high vibrational place, like you said, that self-worth, self-esteem, that's what you could be working on before you take action or before 
things change. They're the simple things that I know you've worked on, that I've worked on a lot every day. They're the simple things that we work on every day. And then it's just amazing what can start to change. You know, people can leave our lives or like it's just, it's just, I just love it. So we're not alone. There's, there's those little things that we can do before or to prepare ourselves. Very, but, very true. Very okay. true. All right. All well, right. we are signing off now for this week. Yeah. And we're so glad that you've been with us for this conversation. And remember, if there's anything that you'd like us to discuss, please, you know, let us know that. These are something we've, we've been talking about things that people want to discuss, you know, be discussed. So that's what we've been doing over the, the last few episodes. You know, send it in. Let us know. Please, you know, um, what, what was that thing that we wanted them to do about the podcast? Oh, I like to write a review. <laughs> yeah, write a review. <laughs> Sometimes people don't want to do that. We don't mind, but I'm giving you a little prompt. So there you go. <laughs> Alison We've, loves those absolutely. words. They're so I love you know, a little review. They, they make her heart flutter. Yeah, I love them too. You know what it is. <laughs> And the courage, the courage to even ask for for yeah. things like that. So you yeah. step in our comfort zones all the time. I know. There you go. <laughs> so, all right. Until next week, we will we will sign off. You know, have a think about what we've what we've said in this. But we will uh, we'll be back next week. And thank you very much. Okie dokie. See you. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Sacred Sessions. Your comments, questions and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram and through our websites. Naturally, all links are in the show notes.